guys and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. You guys voted on the community tab what you wanted to see in today's episode and Kate Trinata came in the lead. If you want to vote for the next episode, then make sure you like and subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can see when a post goes live. Today's findings were definitely interesting. I think I had about four or five failed attempts at the project that we're going to look at today. And with each attempt, I clawed closer to that Kate Trinata sound. So we're definitely going to dive into some of the key instruments from Kate Trinata's back catalog. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive into it. I'm not going to be covering everything from today's failed attempts because I think that's a little bit of a waste of time for you. However, if you want to download today's project, along with the stems and samples, including some of the nicer sounds from the projects we haven't covered, then dive into the Patreon. I think I've got a couple of spaces left for one-to-one -one tuition as well, alongside some racks, templates, and other handy things that should be beneficial to your music making career. All right, Kate Trinada. I would suggest staying right until the end of this video because I'm also gonna be playing this track in its entirety at the end of the video. And you'll notice that there's some arrangement changes towards the end of the song as well that you might wanna take note of. But let's dive straight into the drum selection. The thing about Kate Trinada's drums is they're so loud in the mix and they have this like oversample, over compressed sound. So I really wanted to get that down. I don't see many people going for that super punchy feel in other tutorials. So the drums in this example definitely got inspiration from Twin Flame, the newest song, and Intimidated, a track that features her. So the first thing that I wanted to get down was just that kick drum. For the kick, I'm using this murder kick sample from Splice. The reason for that is it looks super similar to the kick used in Twin Flame. You can see that our kick has the gain all the way up, brick wall limit in there, and something fairly similar in Anderson Pack and Kate Renata's song. So we're going for a similar kind of sound in this example. I'm making sure that my drums sit fairly off grid. They come in on the beat, but then you can see that there are a few ticks away and gradually grow closer to being on beat over time. I kept this up over the space of about four bars. As we get to that four bar margin, back on the loop, we're back on the downbeat again. So this gives that classic Diller or Catronada feel of it being fairly lazy and offbeat. You can hear the click landing just before every kick drum there. And you'll notice that sometimes I've got another kick here where I've turned the gain all the way down which gives a nice ghost note or double kick feel. In terms of processing for the kick, I've taken off the ultra low stuff and the ultra high stuff and just taken down the muddy frequencies a little bit. Utility there just to put the bass in mono and I'm using the limiter because you can see that this kick is super loud. So I'm just making sure Again, we have that kind of over compressed squashed sound in the mix. I've got a nice splice original snare here. And that snare had a lot of room noise originally. I pitched it up a couple of semitones and then just preserved those transients, forward envelope, brought it back to 32. Not too much processing, just a little bit of EQ, utility to put it in mono. And I've coupled that with a clap that's panned a little bit to the left. As you can see again, transients forward around that 30 margin once again, not pitched up this one, EQ'd to make it nice and tight. And then a line delay to make sure that it has a much wider feel than the snare. I've chopped up little drum fills throughout from Splice Originals once again, and albeit these do have transients that are preserved and are pitched up, haven't even bothered to EQ or do anything with, because they're gonna be a minor part in the song. The kick snares and claps are thrown together in a kick and snare group with drum bus with a tiny little bit of drive and some crunch, and I've thrown an audio effect rack that has three chains. Now I've covered parallel compression in there before, but in this example, I have a top chain and a bottom chain. It's basically the high high energy and low energy. And the reason for that is I wanted to control some of the lows and just take them down a dB altogether. So I've sorted them like that and then done some parallel compression, which you can find out how to do if you don't know already in the top right of this video. After that, I've used Lifeline Expanse, which is a plugin I've covered on the channel before. Absolutely love Lifeline Expanse and Lifeline Console and made sure to use it just to add that saturated feel. With and without my drums sound like this. And then with, 
Moving on, I've got the top drums, which is just hi-hats. I've taken this from a live acoustic drum sample, so you can see all the drums there, and just chopped by hand any hi-hat one shot that I could find. That includes open hi-hats and different velocities of hi-hats as well. You can tell that these are not only off beat, but super off the quarter note margins for the bar lines as well. I did this by hand, but even then they didn't feel as swung or as lazy as I'd like. So I made sure to hit this little D icon in the bottom right and increase the millisecond delay to 12. That's just pushing the beat back a little bit more as well. The open hi-hat sounds really nice in my opinion and has that feel because of the side chain link to the kick. Without that, it sounds way more aggressive. To get to the end point of this video, I actually worked with the Sister Sledge sample from Twin Flame. But I could never work out if they actually had access to the Sister Sledge stems and that would have made mixing way easier. That being said, I did take inspiration from that kind of sample drum feel of Twin Flame. So I've taken some hats, made sure that we've really squashed the EQ here, and we've got them in mono from utility and side chain to the kick. That gives this kind of looped tape feel. And I've doubled that up with a similar EQ and similar processing with just a clap here that I took from a Shigeto pack on Splice. Each of these claps are different. So once again, that adds just a little bit of a live feel to the track. Something that you might have heard there that I actually use in my own music and is inspiration from Kate Trinata are these little dropouts that just include a random piece of percussion. So we've also included the Broods tambourine for just a quarter of a bar there. And it only ever falls when we switch up the drum arrangement a little bit between a kick and a snare. I didn't feel like I could deliver a Kate Trinata tutorial to you guys without including that kind of famous Kate Trinata bass sound. My first few examples were lacking this and it just didn't feel the same. I think what could be one of the overlooked points of the Kate Trinata bass is even if you get the sound down, you've got to really try and play it like the artist. Find the space amongst the drums and make sure that there's plenty of melody in that bass line as well. Don't just play the root notes of the chords you have. And as you can see, I just made this bass inside Serum. It took me a couple of attempts. I watched a lot of tutorials and definitely Synth Hacker had the closest version to that sound. I used this Moog bass sound, which I think I downloaded from Synth Hacker, so shout out to you. The sub I'm making sure is going direct out down two octaves alongside oscillator A, which is also down two octaves. It's mostly about the decay of the envelope, but you want to make sure that the filter is linked to the envelope as well. And make sure that you've got the distortion and filter in your effects. It's not a super hard sound to make, but it's a little bit time consuming in terms of going back and forth to the reference material. I watched so many Kate Trinata interviews on the lead up to this tutorial, and I know that his production methods are a little avant-garde, which kind of lends himself to being the genius producer that we're looking at today. For the bass, I wanted to use a method that was a little bit outside the norm to get that push-pull kind of feeling. So I linked the gain of the utility to the bass and then just by hand, every now and then duck the volume. Sometimes that meant falling on the downbeat of the bass, which would give it a more of a wub kind of sound. And sometimes I ducked it just in the middle of its playing, which gave it this kind of vinyl warping bounce. Okay, so I think it's time to talk about the piano melody, which was definitely pulled from the inspiration of Twin Flame. Do you guys see the video from Twin Flame? It looked like they borrowed the floating stage from Kanye's St. Pablo tour. Music videos are important though. That's why today's episode is sponsored by DistroKid or DistroVid. I love a good pun. You see, with DistroVid, you can upload to Apple Music, Amazon, Tidal, and Vivo, which I can promise you just trying to manually upload to those platforms alone will cost you way more than the DistroVid sign-up fee. It's super easy. You just hit upload my first video. You select all the platforms, because why not? And then it just walks you through 
artist's name? Have you previously released? When would you like it to release? They really do make it a step-by-step -step guide to make sure that you have the best quality video on all of the platforms. However, I know you might not be there yet. You might just be getting started. So if you want to sign up to DistroKid and start releasing your music on all of the streaming platforms, that's over 200 platforms, then make sure you use the link in the description below as you'll get 7% off your first year. Let's get back to this Kate Trinata video. Originally, I was going about this all the wrong way. The first time I wanted to go for something a little bit more Twin Flame-esque, and I wanted to play that piano in myself for whatever reason, but you just couldn't get that sampled sound. This is what my melody sounded like beforehand. So I will include this sample in the Patreon pack because I do really like the bass line. It's chopped up and comes from a live disco or funk sample, but without that like classic Catronada sound, it just wasn't working for me. This was definitely an example that was closer to Twin Flame, which I think sounds a little bit more unique, but a little bit more minimal because it's all about Anderson Pack's vocal. Now the piano originally was played in with the Ableton upright piano and sounded like this. And I really liked that sound, but it was just kind of lacking amongst the whole beat. So let's go back to our like official example. In this example, I took a piano funk loop from Splice and I just made sure to chop it up into a melody that I liked. The first kind of eight bars is a lot more staccato. In the second eight bars, I keep it more close to the original, but I add these really staccato chops anytime that there's a drum fill. There's a lot of chopping there and re-pitching the sample. Another thing that I think makes Kate Trinata truly unique and also makes his music beautiful for pairing with a vocal is how he processes some of the melodic instruments. They're so low in the mix. I really struggled creating this version of the song and I probably bounced it out to MP3 about six different times because I was finding that I was keeping my drums and bass so low in the mix and the melody so high. And now it feels strange to have a track that the drums and bass really jump out at you and the melody is so subtle. That being said, my EQ looks like this getting rid of any muddy notes around the 302k marks and then I'm adding the Valhalla Vintage Reverb. I've got the mix up quite high at 25% and the decay quite low to give it more of a plate reverb sound. The shape is taken down to about 50% and I'm making sure that again I couple this to the sidechain with the kick. That is going to be key to this sound. You couple in a lot of melodic sounds and hi-hats and percussion to the kick. And then I've got a line delay really quite wide to make sure that my bass sits central. Without these effects, you get a very different sound. And you have to make sure that that's complementary to the bass. What was personally really tough for me was trying not to add too many other melodies after that piano. If you go back to Kate Trinata's tracks and listen to the ones that have vocals or the ones without, the melodic elements are really, really simple and really low in the mix. So I've got this Splice Originals wakey pad here in Serum. And the only things that I've changed is add an LFO and increase the unison to 16 and increase that detune sound. So this has a really wide and quite spacious feel to it. Now later on in the song, I use that same wakey pad without the LFO or the unison, and then I make sure to automate the pitch wheel inside envelopes. This gives it a real detuned feel. Now the other sounds that I've added on top of this are just sprinklings of some flavors that I found throughout Kate Trinata's discography from 10% Vex or Chances. I've got this tiny serum pluck here that's like super swept off in the filter, but I've added loads of reverb and delay. 
And I like to play this much higher in the octaves. You hear a little bit of that transient sound, but you hear way more of the reverb and delay, which I really like to complement the melody. And then finally, I'm just using Ableton's electric piano, not quantized at all, and I haven't added anything to this electric preset. I've just rolled off some of that high energy information. Underneath that, I've just added some filter sweeps, which normally land on the downbeat of the kick or occasionally on the snare. And I've also taken another couple of fills from Splice. This is my favorite thing about what Kate Trinada does. He'll put fills in a really odd place of the bar line. You'll notice that towards the end of the intro in Twin Flame and throughout the Tidra Moses remix. So that falls just after the reintroduction of the first bar. I think it's really unexpected, but it's that kind of tension and release that really fills the audience with excitement. I think that basically wraps up my sound. I'll give you a preview of the entire beat that we made for this tutorial, but don't forget about the Patreon where you can download this project and some of the samples from the projects that didn't quite make the cut. Let me know what you thought of this episode, and if you want to vote for what you want to see in future, don't forget to like and subscribe. have it guys what did you think of today's Kate Trinada inspired by episode did you enjoy it why why not did I miss anything I'd greatly like to know and I'd love to know what you're looking to see in future it can be a genre that we've covered before or something super outlandish I'm open to all ideas for now guys I thank you so much for stopping by don't forget about the patreon like and subscribe so you can see when the next video drops and I'll see you next time